Hey, and welcome to another Sound Learn Quick Tip Tuesday. Today, we're going to learn how to seamlessly loop audio. Now, the idea behind seamlessly looping audio is that once you hit play and the audio starts looping, you can't quite tell where the loop begins and ends. So right here, I've got a loop of rain, and you're going to hear that once it starts playing, once the loop starts repeating, you can't quite hear the loop. Obviously, as you can see the visual loop, you will be able to hear it as well. But as soon as I start making a bunch of copies of this, and I hide it, and I hit play, it, it becomes pretty hard to differentiate where exactly the loop is beginning and ending. You can sort of guess, but it kind of just sounds like one long audio file. So let's get right into doing uh, learning how to do this. So let's go back to this playlist where I have the full audio track of some rain. And uh, this is just a long, about two minute long uh, audio track of just some rain. Now we could use this whole thing in a, in a case like a, making a video game, but that starts becoming very costly to the file size. Uh, so when you're making a, something like a video game and you need, a, you need some rain sounds, uh, what you would normally do is make a loop like this. So um, the idea here is to find a section of this audio where nothing really stands out. So an example of this, as you can hear there, there's a big crackle there, there's a big splash of uh, a water droplet. So that's something you wouldn't want to use because as soon as we start looping that, you'll know exactly where that loop is. Because every time you hear that drop, you'll know, all right, there's a loop. I'm not being tricked here. So I, I already marked a spot over here where I found something that could work pretty well. There's nothing really going on here. We hear a drop there. So we're going to go up to there from this little one over here to right before that big drop. And we're going to hit Command T, and that'll delete everything to the left of it and to the right of the selection. So let's bring that over here to work e more easily. Now, the, this is very, very simple. All you got to do is come here around the middle, cut it, and then you're going to go into shuffle mode over here. And what that does, it's going to flip these two. So this, the one that was over here shuffled over here, and the one that was back here is now over here. Now think about what this is doing if we undo again. This is already seamless. There's no, the cut is not doing anything there. So as soon as we switch it over, if you think about it, the end of this file coinc coincides with the beginning of the file. So there's no jump there. Now the jump is right here. Which in this, in this example, you can't really tell too much. But in most examples, you'd be able to tell there's a, there's a, there's a cut right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a crossfade. And you can't just do a regular crossfade because you'll hear a dip in volume. So you want to double click and turn it to an equal power fade. And now that you select everything, you will have a seamless audio loop. Now, if you wanted to export this, you do a shift option three, and that makes a whole file. And now you can duplicate it a million times and you've got a seamless audio loop. So I hope that helped a bit. And, uh, takes a little bit of experimentation to get it just right. Not every time you do this will work perfectly, but it's definitely worth experimenting with and trying it out and saving on some, uh, some file sizes.